there. Uh, yeah. Getting him uh, back out there and, and uh, running around a little bit. So hope to get him back here soon. He's just uh, just re recovering. So that step by step process. How about some of these other guys? I mean, Brandon Knight. Is he, do you have any yeah. hopes that he'll be back at some point? Progressing. Yeah, but the hope is, you know, we just got to keep working him and you know, he's working hard, you know, with the, with our training staff and and uh, doing everything he can do. So that's all all we can expect of him. So he's doing a great job. Generally, everybody else kind of through the first couple of weeks to stay pretty healthy. Pretty healthy, yeah. You, know, you get your nicks and the guys that here and there have some things happen, but uh, overall, it's been pretty solid, you know. And uh, you're going to have a few things, especially when you had that eight day stretch there. But uh, had a chance to get some rest yesterday, and that was good for our guys. And we'll come back tomorrow and have a big, big, uh, big scrimmage. You I like guess the it's, energy? it's something that, sorry, just to follow up, it's something mm -hmm. that it seems like every coach has a little bit different philosophy on mm -hmm. how you maybe balance, you know, getting physicality into mm -hmm. training camp without getting guys hurt or, or maybe being too reckless or aggressive mm -hmm. kind of what's your philosophy as a coach on that? well you know i'm going to err on the side of being physical early on i just think that uh, you have to tackle you have to because you, know, you basically haven't done that since some spring ball so like do that early on and then and once you get you know about two weeks into it then you start kind of focusing more on getting the timing down a little more of a thud tempo mentality but we're still in the you know, we haven't even had our first scrimmage yet, so really want to take that mentality through this first scrimmage and then even to, into next week. And then once we get through next week, then you kind of just kind of probably a little bit more of a, a mode of of less um, hitting and, and more getting our bodies back. Are you happy with the energy that you're seeing in practice? Consistent yeah. energy each day. Yeah, and that's why I would just say, you know, the guys that have come and watched us um, that, that I know and trust and, and have seen us in the past in different places, I think that's been a, kind of a constant. Um, is that they've been impressed with how hard kids practice and the enthusiasm and energy that they have out there. And so, you know, I mean, it's uh, obviously different days, different guys, but as a collective group, you know, I, th I thought that uh, I was a little concerned about being a little sluggish after having a day off. Sometimes that happens, but uh, I thought our guys had that great energy today and, and got better. Your uh, receiving core obviously has gotten a lot of attention. Mm -hmm. And I think Bernardo, uh, uh, you know, mentioned that it might be one of the best in the conference and in the country. How special can this be and what stands out about the group? Well, you know, I do think they're a special group, you know, and they, they worked really hard. Coach Hurd's uh, got high expectations for them. You know, I think that, you know, we got to continue to consistently catch the ball better, I think. Um, those competitive balls are the ones that we've been emphasizing so much. And, and uh, big hit. I think the thing that stands out at me about them is their length, you know, and uh, I think that uh, puts a lot of pressure on the defense, and I know that does our guys, you know, and be able to, to throw the 50-50 balls or you know, any other kind of balls where their catch radius gives them a big advantage, you know. So and then you got some – some quick guys in the so slot that, that help balance that off. So, um, kid be a special group. You know, obviously we're not where we want to be with them yet, but uh, I think that uh, um, getting uh, you know semi back with a guy like Westbrook, and we know that's their tested guys that have produced and get Luke healthy and, and all those new guys and, and get uh, you know Donovan being who I think he can be. So, absolutely got tremendous potential at that position, and uh, we just got to keep pushing. Coaches use the term catch radius all the time. How exactly do you measure that? Is that wingspan and wingspan. verticality? Yeah, it would be both of those. You know, the bottom line is the longer you are, then uh, the quarterback doesn't have to be as, as accurate. You know, and so he just gets the ball close, and they go. You know, obviously long arms creates a real, a real issue. You know, because most DBs just aren't aren't going to be, you know, to the six three, six four you know, right. mentality. So it makes it tough. Two weeks into to camp, where do you feel like your team is right now? You know, uh, I'll probably know more tomorrow. You know, I feel like that uh, we're. I think we're at a good spot. You know, I feel good about our team. You know, obviously you don't know for sure. Nobody really does until you go against somebody else. But, but in terms of attitude and execution, um, I have been encouraged by the, the situational things we've been working on where we've been able to simulate from both special teams and O&D, and uh, we're getting some good execution at those critical times. You know, I thought Griffin Oaks was really, really strong today um, during our, our live periods of, of finishing out drives with, with field goals. and and uh, was uh, very effective, which is what he needs to be. So that was encouraging, and, and our offense has, has moved the ball at some key times in those situations as well. And the defense has got some big stops today, which forced those field goals. But, but uh, So all three phases, I think, have had a chance to get some real live situational you know, you know, opportunities, and we'll get more of them tomorrow. Talking about Morgan Ellison uh, taking reps with the first team. Yeah. What has he brought to camp that has impressed you? You know, he's just uh, um, great vision, you know, has, has a, maybe more of a burst than uh, – might have thought. Um, real, I think he's really worked hard, you know, since his senior year to get stronger. And uh, his body uh, looks like a Big Ten running back. You know, he's just young. You know, I think today, you know, some of that kind of got a little bit exposed. You know, he didn't uh, didn't. I didn't think he did as well as he's done. You know, for several days. But he obviously earned the right to be with the ones, which is a testament to to him. And uh, but there's also, you know, that's 
being able to maintain that and stay at that high level is, is, is what the maturity, you know, kicks in. So he'll be, uh, he's going to be a good one. How, uh, how, how are you guys going to handle the, the scrimmage? Is it going to be all ones versus one, two versus twos? You know, more ones versus twos. You know, but we'll have some we'll have some ones versus ones go situationally. But uh, the, the probably the more the drives and the, and the broader perspective is going to be ones versus twos. I asked you about it last week. You, but you talked about having some of the strong spring and summers. Chris Covington maybe mm -hmm. still stepping up the way you want him to as you get into fall camp and kind of comes closer to. Yeah, he he game. has. You know, once again, you know, he kind of. You see guys all the time as, as a coaching staff. And so when others come in to watch that haven't seen him all the time, and he's a guy that, that always uh, has, you know, comments about people, he, he, his physicality and then the way he runs and, and uh, his, he's, he's fitting the ball well, you know, and learn how to, to play Mike and just get more reps than in the past. And so because he's the, the first team guy, you know, so just I've been encouraged by him. I think that he um, has continued to develop and, and master his – you know, fits when it's tempo. That's that's to me is everybody can kind of do it when it's slower, but to be able to make the checks, make the adjustments, get us lined up right when they're going faster is is really the next step for him. And he's done he's done a good job of that. I just think that's got to continue to improve, and, and I believe it will. What's the key to developing uh, pass rushers? Talking about defensive linemen mm -hmm. from your perspective, genetics. <laughs> you know, it's a big part of it. You know, so you got to go find those guys. You know, and yeah, you can teach technique, and you will. I think it's it's the ability to have the twitch that you're looking for, and it's want to. You know, so much of it is effort. I mean, I think that when you watch, even just if you isolate a, a great pass rusher, I mean, it's just you have to be relentless because you you just keep going, you keep going, you keep going. You may only get there a few times, you know, but you have to have that same mentality, snap after snap after snap. So, but but if you if you can't move. You know, quick enough. You know, it's hard to create. Now you can, you know, you can schematically do some things where you help those guys out. But to win a one-on-one -on -one pass rush, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, you got to go find guys that have that ability to do it, and then, and get the technique to where they understand leverage. You know, that's why wrestlers are often good at it because of understanding that and the balance and the push pull and, and all the things that go into playing that position. But, but uh, you know, I just think that a big part of that's recruiting. Well, do you do you recruit wrestlers? Then? I do, yeah. No, I love recruiting wrestlers. I just think that, uh, especially in line scrimmage, mm -hmm. the linebacker, you know, I think those guys are good tacklers. They, uh, they're they good offensive linemen usually, um, really good defensive linemen. You know, I just think that it's it's a, it's, it's a mindset too, you know, a toughness that you have to have to play that sport or to, to compete in that sport is, is different. And, uh, you know, T. Gray Scales was a, was a great high school wrestler. And uh, I even mentioned that to one of the scouts today. today. And uh, to me, that's one reason why he's such a good tackler and why he's such a, so mentally tough. So, yeah, I think, I think wrestlers are a great compliment to football. Coach Thalen was recently uh, on campus visiting mm -hmm. with the program that looked like he spoke to the team. I guess just what was his message to the team and not only that, but how important is it having you know, men of that stature around the program? Yeah. I think it's huge. You know, I, I, you know I've hear, heard it stated once in, in a book I've read. It's, it's called The Power of the Outside Voice. You know, it's to be able to bring guys in that, that say maybe similar things that you're saying, but in a different way, in their own way, from their experiences, from their set of eyes. You know, he's been to a lot of different camps, both NFL camps and collegiate camps. A lot of guys bring him in to, to consult, if you want to call it that. And so he uh, he has a, a lot of experience, and he knows what he's looking at and knows what, it, what it's supposed to look like. And he's not afraid to tell us. You know, he's not going to just tell you what you want to hear. He's going to tell you the truth and what he sees, and the good and the bad. And so I felt like you know, he spent you know, three days with us and got a chance to really watch our team, be in meetings, be in team meeting, be in practice, watch the walkthroughs, and really uh, give us some great feedback. You know, as coaches and as players, I haven't talked to our coaching staff, I haven't talked to our team, and uh, just tell them the truth. You know, and, and also just give them some wisdom about you know what it takes to, to be a great team. You know, so I just uh, I have so much respect for him. He's been such a special person to me, and I uh, appreciate him taking the time to be with us. Seems like a lot of the. Well, a lot of what we've been able to see anyway, it's been a pretty consistent number one O-line, obviously still trying to get Brandon back. Mm -hmm. But do you feel like you feel comfortable in sort of maybe dialing in who are, who are your main guys yeah. along the offensive front? I think so. I think the guys that you're seeing in that first group, have, uh, you know, I think they have good chemistry. You know, they communicate well and they've worked extremely hard. And, and I think they've really developed, you know, in, uh, over the course of the last several practices. And so I think, as we all know, that's a huge, you know, priority for us and for every single team. You know, you, you, know, you win up front on both sides of the football, you know. So I've been encouraged by their development, and uh, Coach Hiller's doing a tremendous job with that group. Playing Ohio State in the open, obviously, it's gotten media buzz, it's gotten fan buzz. Mm -hmm. uh, are there other players? I mean, does it create buzz among the players? It, it does because it's, uh, you know, they understand the magnitude of it. It's a conference game to open the season. And, and like I just told our team today, you know, we're, we're talking about Ohio State because that's the team we're playing. They're our first game, you know. 
and we're not trying to make a bigger deal of the, of the game than it is, but it's a conference game to open the season. We had the same thing happen at the previous school I was at where we opened the conference and, and on a Thursday night, national TV, ESPN game to open conference play. That's a, it's important, you know, and so uh, the stakes are high because of, of it being that kind of a game and it just happens to be Ohio State, you know, in my opinion, they, they're going to be fired up, but uh, obviously our kids are, you know, it's at home, you know, it's a night game. It opens the season, you know, it's, it's a you know, conference team that we uh, we know we have to beat, you know, to be where we want to be in the conference, you know. So that's all those things equal great opportunity. Just checking in with the corners, I mean, obviously no Richard mm -hmm. and, you know, Rashawn guys like that and Tyler Green, but anyone else kind of servicing as a, as a depth, those guys who you feel comfortable putting in there? With the yeah, you know, Raheem Lane, you know, two freshmen, they made plays today. Um, uh, we call him Day Day, but Damian Hunt, you know, is another one. I think both those guys are pretty, pretty good players, you know, and uh, really love their attitude. Love their skill set. Um, more than anything, just their mindset. You know, you got these certain guys that come here ready to play. You know, and, and they they didn't come here. To, their mindset is to come here to redshirt. You know, they came here to compete. And and uh, I see those guys, man, out there. You know, going against our receivers who we, we know have 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 talent. And he's out there battling with it. You know, fighting for balls and learning. You know, kind of being thrown into the wolves there, which is a great great thing. So, you know, Andre has done a great job. And uh, so we we feel like we've got some some depth there that we haven't had since I've been here, you know, so that's encouraging. While your team was warming up, I think it was Chase, I noticed that he stopped like this, mm -hmm. and it looked like everybody's done it. Yeah. Can you talk about that, or is that a team thing? Well, I mean, we do, uh, um, to start our special teams meetings, we have a way of getting our, to make sure everybody's locked in. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of did it, you know, Chase, is, he's, a, he's a funny guy, so he's always kind of you know, making fun of the coaches and kind of impersonating stuff, and so he was impersonating, you know, Coach Nojo doing that clap, and so but how he started to do it, he had the dimension where he says zero. You're supposed to clap. If you say two, you clap twice, obviously. You cut three, you clap three times. And so he did a zero. And then if you clap, obviously, you're not paying attention. And he got one of the coaches on it yesterday. <laughs> and then he did it today. And, and so it just kind of, he has some fun with it. So but if you notice, as he says it, he's always trying to make fun of somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so that's good. Got to have fun.